We're the Bash Brothers and welcome to 2017. Uh, we hope you had a great time with your family and uh, got a lot of cool stuff and uh, that you didn't pass out uh, drunk out in the street like uh, some people do in the movies. Uh, we, ha we haven't been here in a while. Uh, we had to see some movies and uh, it took us a while to get this list done but... Uh, it's hard to do a top 10 list of movies. It is it's hard, hard just because it's hard, there's uh, a lot of movies came out this year. And we had to wait some movies to even start playing so we can even put them on, uh, to see if uh, we can even put them on our list like Collateral, Be Collateral Beauty and uh, it just, making a top 10 list is easy. I know that I did it last year but and it was tough but this year was even tougher and... Uh, a lot of good movies. A lot of good movies. Alright, so before we start, yes. the way this works is uh, we're gonna borrow from some people. So we're gonna do honorable mentions, we're gonna do our 10 to 6 and then we're gonna do 5 We're just to gonna 10. borrow the format. Yeah. Uh, the movies are ours and bear, bear, bear that in mind. Uh, we're not gonna like the same movies you do, we may not even we're like... We're definitely not gonna have our top 10. There's gonna be some stuff that showed up in other people's top 10s, but uh, it's gonna be a few different things, I guess. It's our favorite movies, these aren't necessarily the best main movies, the best performances in the movies. These, these are our top 10 movies. These are our the top movies, 10 movies. Top 10 movies that we like this year. That we like this year because of entertainment value, because of... Uh, for whatever reason. The plot, the actors, doesn't really matter. Rewatchability, you name it. Stuff that stuck with us. Yes. But, so we're gonna do, before we do honorable mentions, we're just gonna put, out, put it out there. There's a couple of movies uh, living that... Technically, in U.S. got a December 2016 release date, but we don't get to see him till uh, January. Some of them even, I think, early February. So, uh, so we just some of them might have made it on our list. A couple of them probably would have, but we did not see him. But since they're technically and they can't even come out yet, yeah, so that's why we didn't see him. But uh, since they're technically December 2016 releases, we're just gonna name them. There's La La Land, there's Silence, there's Fences, uh, Monster Calls. Uh, Hidden Figures, uh, Live by Night, Patriots Day, all great, all sh all of them should be great movies. It's stuff that we're hearing about it. They will be great movies, but uh, technically we didn't see them yet. We won't get to see them for a little while yet, so they're not on the list. So if, now you know why, because we didn't see them, so we can't put them on that. And it's already January, already began, and we already waited long enough to make this list. So. We also gonna leave from the list uh, Sing and uh, Moana uh, because in Croatia uh, animated movies get dubbed and since we don't support that uh, we haven't seen either one of them yet so that's why they're not on our list or even among honorable mentions well there are honorable mentions right now but uh, we haven't seen them Moana would probably get on our top 10 list maybe probably from what it's we hear about Disney, we love rock and from everything we saw about it we, we definitely love it but, but uh, we didn't see it yet so, so yeah February, March so now we gonna do this Sing also looks great but yeah Sing looks great same thing we didn't see yet so it's not on the list now you know why so yeah so we're gonna do the uh, bottom five, ten to six, and then we're gonna go to five to two, and then we're gonna do the number one uh, start off first. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna do now that we got the honorary honorable mentions out of the way, some movies that did not make it to the top ten for me. Few that I really enjoyed. You have Jungle Book, uh, The Finest Hour. Uh, Bastille Day, it got released here as a Bastille Day, Bastille for you Day. it's probably the I actually date. missed that one. Uh, Sully, uh, there's uh, Hunt for the Widow People, and there's Greg Gilly Hopkins. Uh, Jungle Book, just an all around great movie, I loved it, I mean it's not one of my favorite animated movies, but what John Favre did with it, Don't the worry, way I he brought it to life, yeah, I just loved it. Uh, Fine Stars. Uh, we get to see a lot of tributes to the military people, to the police, but uh, I think the last... Uh, I don't think the there rock, was military the, in that movie, it was a uh, Coast no, no. Guard. I'm getting to that. We, we rarely get to see tributes to the Coast Guard. 
Uh, the Rock did San Andreas, there was a little Ghost Goddish there. Kevin... Uh, uh, Kevin Costner and Ashton Kutchner, they did uh, The Guardian, a great tribute to the Ghost Guard. But this is early, I, I can't remember the year, 19 something, 40 something. It was early, early 20th century. Yeah, a uh, great all around movie performance. Chris Pine did a great job, probably his best role in my opinion of his uh, next to Hell or High Water, which is which you didn't see, but I did. So and two movies that I really kind of wanted to push into my top ten uh, because you always gonna have one of those coming of age stories that you want to push up there. But I got two of them actually. One is Greg Lee Hopkins. The other one is Hunt for the Wilder People. Wilder People, yeah. Now Hunt for the Wilder People. He was directed by uh, Taika Waititi. Uh, who's gonna be doing, Who's who did Thor 3 Ragnarok, so that should be, it's coming out ne next year, this year. Apparently our siblings loved it. I loved it, I watched it, it was great, I mean, the, uh, it's about a kid, a foster kid who gets put into a foster family, uh, his foster mom dies and he kind of stuck with his foster dad, he calls him uncle, played by uh, Sam Neill. And they kind of go wandering around, around New Zealand bush area, and they get there's a national manhunt going on. There's a couple of stuff that happens along the way that just make it really funny. Greg Gilly Hopkins, probably for me, the best uh, movie based on a book that came out this year. Uh, Catherine Peterson did the book. I didn't read the book, but judging from the movie, if the movie turned out this good, book has got to be, you know, uh, Sophie Nelise, I think is her name, she started, and uh, Catherine Bates, Sophie, did the book thief a couple of years back, so, great all around performance by them. So, that's me, that's honorable mentions. So your top 10 list, top 10 to 5. 10 to 5, The Accountant. Now at number 10, Doctor Strange at number 9, Eye in the Sky at number 8, 7 has to be Assassin's Creed. Oh wow, okay. And Deepwater Horizon brings it in as uh, number 6. Number 6, wow. Okay, though... Okay, those are good. Uh, my honorable mentions... So I... Preach, I... Um... You want to talk about each one of them? Or? I mean, the accountant, you have Ben Affleck starting as the accountant. I mean, he's laundered money for some of the biggest small families out there. And uh, if you ever want money that can't be traced, you go to Ben Affleck. And uh, Anne Kendricks kind of jumps in there. And uh, the Punisher's in there. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to call him the Punisher. <laughs> But yeah, but I think after seeing the account, I think all of his roles are not gonna be as the Punisher, because the true. I love him in dramas, but the accountant was great, uh, but uh, it didn't make my top ten list. But it's um, I enjoyed it's it. It's definitely one of those movies that's gonna stick in my mind uh, for a long time to come. Uh, Your number nine, Doctor Strange. Uh, we had a ton of uh, superhero movies come out this year, Civil War, BVS, Suicide Squad, Deadpool, X-Men Apocalypse came out, which was another one of my favorites. But Doctor Strange is the one to make the cut for the simple reason that uh, Marvel uses a formula that worked with Guardians of the Galaxy, worked with the Ant-Man, where you have a standalone movie that does tie into the Avengers, but at the same time stands alone. But as far as the plus, as far as the characters, Eastern, I loved it more than any other. Probably had to go right now and you're like, okay, which superhero movie would you watch? Rewatch? Doctor Strange would be my oh, answer. Definitely, definitely. It didn't make my top 10 list, but uh, thanks for doing that because I had real. Because it's I hard, real because hard if, you, if you're putting superhero movies on the list, it's really hard to do them right, because which one do you put on there, which one do you not? For me, Doctor Strange does make the cut for basically being the, the most original. 
Yeah. Uh, if you want to call it that way. Uh, it's definitely it's you not that the others it. sucked. It's not that the others were not good. Man, hey, I'd watch all of them all over again. But that, if I, I had to pick one just because... I don't think you have to pick a superhero movie on your list. But the, the way superhero genre works now, you're going to see plenty of more movies. So definitely. Give him tribute, put one on there. For me, it's Doctor Strange. He's the one that stuck out of the re from the rest. Yeah. Number eight. Uh, Number eight is I in the Sky. I didn't make my top ten uh, list. Helen, uh, Helen Mirren. And, Helen uh, Mirren, yeah. And uh, Aaron Paul start. Uh, Gavin Hood did Directed. it. And, uh, yeah, for me, this was his redemption movie. He did <laughs> X-Men, he did Wolverine Origins, which... God, I love the movie, but you know what I mean. Uh, this one, you got a situation in Kenya, I believe it is. You got... And it's a great, it's a great movie talking about the way things are in today's world in regards to Big Brother being active and. Uh, well, yeah, because you have a military operation and they want to capture a couple of wanted men, I guess. And uh, pretty soon the whole situation goes from a capture capture mission to a kill mission because there's suicide vests involved, and uh, at that point. You're gonna blow the whole compound Reminded out, and then you have the whole situation where there's civilian casualties, and what do you do? Yeah. Because you have to take out a high target, uh, target, and uh, you have civilian casualties that you want to avoid. And he deals with that whole dynamic. Yeah, it and reminded it's pretty me. pretty powerful, though. It reminded me of uh, failsafe. A little bit, even though failsafe had the nuclear bomb in the middle of the Cold War and remake. Also in the Cold War, but it was remake. But uh, it was no, a nuclear whole, bomb, yeah. and uh, it had this whole dilemma of whether to shoot, push that red button, and uh, yeah, he used the same thing. Like if you kill them now, you have civilian casualties, and so, someone's gonna know, be responsible. Someone's gonna have to answer, and we want to avoid that at it all. It plays costs. the dynamic of you know, you gotta stand up for something. Yeah. And Aaron Paul just kills it in this one. Uh, you know, he's the drone pilot who's supposed to fire yeah. the rocket that kills people. And he's holding it off as long as possible, possible yeah. to avoid the civil casualties. Uh, but the whole dynamic of the movie is just... It kept me on the edge of my seat. Yeah, I And I try to keep it off my top ten, just couldn't. Could. It was that good for me. Number seven? Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. Uh, it's uh, technically a third fourth uh, video game movie of the year. Well, you had uh, Warcraft, you had uh, Harbour Henry. And uh, Ratchet and Clank. Which, I don't know if they were... Which Clank to I think. But, uh, no, Assassin's Creed, uh, based on the game, yeah. I played the first game, didn't play the rest of them. But I didn't I play loved, any of them. I loved what they did with the movie. I loved the way that uh, they brought the past and the future together. I loved the way... That was my most favorite the whole thi part. The music fit. And for me, I never look at the music. You know, that I don't care. I mean, you can do... Lord of the you can do Mozart, you know what I mean? I don't care. I'm looking at the movie. But at one point, even for me, the music just clicks and everything's perfect. I know it gets a lot of bad lip, but for me, it, it's a great movie. The performance by Michael Fassbender, by uh, Marion Cotillard. It just, their dynamic, the way they play it out, especially towards the end of the movie, just amazing. Yeah, and the part of the movie, I thought that, I mean, Jeremy Aaron says, like, I know you're Santi's first, te Templar second, but to me, I don't think she even wants to be a Templar. No, but so, that, that's where the whole dynamic whole, at the end dilemma, comes in. Yeah. Yeah, and then you have the end, the way they finish it. They I set mean, it up for the next one, they could have done it differently, but for me, I loved it because they say, hey, we're leaving the possibility you're open, that we are making another one. I really do hope they do. I hope they do, and I hope they finish the story with the Apple, because to me, they could have just... They could have done a one-off, or just make it a standalone, do one movie, and if but you want to do the, the next one, just do another story. Just but. But uh, I love the fact that they decided, hey, we're gonna keep this up. I was a little but bit disappointed with the ending, but the actions there. Oh, well, the action. I mean, the um, sets. Oh yeah. The ambience. You believe the you're stunts. In, you believe you're in the 1492. You believe it because you're there, and, and you're living the game. Oh, you're definitely. You're reliving the game. 
especially with all the moves that make the stunts that are involved, you're there. I mean, when he makes the leaps of faith, when he jumps from building to building, you, you did it in the movie. In the it's parkour and it's Assassin's Creed. Oh yeah, and it's, I love that. Yeah, and number six? Deep Water Horizon. Peter Berg did it. Uh, Peter another Berg one and that, uh, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg starts. Another one based on the... Actual events actual that took, events place took place about four years ago. Was it 2012? Yeah. I think it was. And with, uh, with the oil spill in the mm, Mexican yeah. Gulf that uh, literally had the whole world uh, on, talking, all, about it. talking about it on social media and following news and sharing stories all the time. One of the biggest natural disasters. Mm. Of our time. Yeah. Of and, our time uh, of 21st Peter century. Berg did a heck of a job putting this one together. Mark Wahlberg is fantastic. John Malkovich, I mean, you hate the guy in the movie, but that's, but that's how good he is. That's how good that's he is. That's what yeah. his roles. He's kind of the bad guy, but he plays the role perfectly. And the movie just Kurt shows. Russell's in there, I mean. Yeah. But you have the whole oil spin, so the, the whole story happens as all the actual oil rigs. Yeah, and we know how the story ends. And yeah. we know how the but what so, happens, but, but to see it from that point of view, seeing it as somebody who was there, it's just amazing. Definitely, definitely. You know, uh, so you had to make the list, made it a number six. Okay. Uh, what about you? My well, I have a I want Deep Water Horizon. Also, I try to put as m if I wanted to put all the movies on the top down list, it would probably all be movies based on true stories. So I had to, for reasons that, because I like too many movies, I had to put Deepwater Horizon on the honorable mentions list, uh, along with uh, Sully, Race, and Eddie the Eagle, as well as uh, <laughs> The Finest Hours. Uh, Eddie the Eagle is probably one of my favorite movies of this year, but... There were so good. many good movies. I yeah. cried. I, uh, I oh yeah, I cried. I cried all three and, times I watched it. Yeah, uh, another movie, is Cellar High Water. Even though not based on a true the, story, the one uh, that I didn't watch. It's basically Bonnie and Clyde in modern day, but it's two brothers against the banks in Texas, and definitely tells an old story in a new kind of way. Uh, I I was definitely wondering what was going to happen in the end. It was. Uh, it was a, it was definitely a wild ride. Um, puns always intended. Um, another movie, and then I have the accountant on the honorable mentions list. Definitely not a movie I'm not gonna forget anytime soon. Doctor Strange, X Men Apocalypse, and Captain America: Civil War. All great comic book movies. Uh, if I had to rate them, I would probably put Doctor Strange in the lead, but. It was a great year for comic book movies, oh, yeah. but I, this year I just couldn't put any of them on the top 10 list for reasons you'll see. Uh, and yeah. And Kevin Smith, that's why. <laughs> uh, Hardcore Henry, also an honorable mention. Uh, that movie did something. I know there's one movie that did the first person kind of shooter with Rock or it was Doom that I haven't seen the movie. I haven't seen that movie, but I know this isn't the first movie to do this. However, it's definitely the but movie. The way they made it. The way they we, made it. We it's, just with GoPro cameras. And, and everything's first person. Shooting. And I've seen. We've seen this together in cinema when it came out, yeah. and the experience was absolutely mind blowing. So it's an honorable mention, not a top ten. Also, Allied. Allied is. A movie by Robert Zemeckis who is probably my favorite director right now uh, maybe of all time even he because he's so versatile all his movies are different from the previous one and uh, I'm not gonna say he never does same movie twice but he almost never does same genre like oh, yeah. one right after the other and his movies are most rewatchable and I they grip you and they Blur you in, and Ally definitely did that for me. Brad Pitt and Marion Cotillard again. Again, uh, she had like three movies this year, I think. Uh, but uh, or at least two that I can think of right now. But man, that movie is so intense, and you just keep. You can watch our review on it, but it's like I was on the edge of my seat. Sully, Tom Hanks, definitely at its at his finest, in my opinion. Uh, I had to leave. Loved it. I didn't even put it on the mentions, but 
he, as far as true stories goes, you know, definitely I one of the it. best ones. And we've all read the news when it happened a few years ago. Also, uh, when that plane landed in the but Hudson River, but to see it done right? the way that it did, uh, I mean, and the way they talk, tell it in the movie is also great. So next one on the honorable mentions is race. Uh, for all the reasons uh, that it's set up in World War, well, before World War, in 1936, uh, Hitler's Germany is reigning and Olympi Olympics are in Munich. <laughs> and here comes this black dude from US, from uh, what you can, middle of nowhere, and uh, climbs charts in the college ranks and makes it to the Olympic team and he goes on to win four medals at the Olympics and all to the shame of Hitler who's uh, Nazi Germany is... He wanted to see the, supra the Nazi Yeah, he supremacy, wanted to see the so Nazi supremacy and here comes this black well. dude that yeah, didn't go well for Hitler but uh, he couldn't do nothing about it otherwise he would have caused World War II before he wanted to. Uh, so, also at the finest hours, uh, we talked about it. Eddie the Eagle. I'll, I'll, I didn't know this story. The fact that I like the one thing I liked about this movie is based on true stories. This guy who knows he's not good at stuff, but it doesn't matter. He goes on and tries his best, and he does it. And he may not have won any medals, but he broke records. He won a lot of cars, though. Oh, definitely. So he showed and up when they had the Winter Olympics. Later and I didn't on even know. Were. I didn't even know this story. And when I saw, it, they even have a shout out to the uh, Jamaicans who were in the bobsled race during those same Olympics. Yeah. And that was one of the best parts of the movie, even though it's like one second long. And uh, the kid who plays Eddie, uh, the I can't remember it right now, but he's a great actor and we've seen him before and he always does a great job, but his career is just off the ground and I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of him uh, the more yeah. he grows and the more movies get made. So my top 10 on the 10th uh, place is Arrival. Great movie, you can watch our review of it. Uh, there's stuff in it that I didn't like, but... Uh, the the concept and what it does for alien invasion movies I just couldn't have put it off uh, off my list so it's on number 10 number 9 yoga hosers yeah Terra Smith. Uh, that's the Kevin Smith part yoga I think he's the only guy who actually put a Kevin Smith movie on the top 10 list ever <laughs> yeah. like ever even Claire's didn't make it or you know, Jersey Girl. I love Jer I love Kevin Smith. We love. Ken I'm a clerk. I actually work as a clerk, so I know everything that happens in that movie. But to actually see Yoga Hosers make the list, I mean, I know, I know, I know. But Kevin has to watch this just for the only reason is like I'm somebody gonna, put Yoga Hosers on the I'm, top ten I'm movies. Gonna, of the I'm year. gonna definitely tweet at him. Uh, but uh, Yoga Hosers was such a fun movie, and I didn't know what to expect, especially after Tusk. Which was so weird and so strange, I didn't end up hating it, but I didn't like it either. I found it interesting and the concept by Yoga Hosers is, Yoga Hosers is so different from Tusk. I didn't watch it yet. It's, uh, so. it's fun. It's one of the I mean, fun, most fun movies, most entertaining movies that I've seen this year. Kevin say he made it for Twin Girls. So, I mean, that's what you're looking at. Couple uh, of teenagers. I think or, anybody yeah. can watch this movie and have fun with it. I know a lot of people hate it for various reasons. I but that's the thing with Kevin Smith. He's he's gonna he's gonna ask the studio for a million bucks to do a movie, and movie is gonna say, yeah, why not? It's a million bucks. He's not asking for a hundred. He's not asking for fifty. He's asking for one. He's not gonna bring in a lot of profit. But now he's at the point where he can make the movies he wants. Exactly. Just for this purpose that they don't cost much. Exactly. And Johnny Depp is at one one. This is probably one of his best roles. In recent years, by far, by far, like the the the, the, the 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 detective he plays is so crazy, and it's my kind of character. It's a character I like to see. So it makes the, it's 
It's been so eaten. there you have it. Yo-Yo Holzer is directed by Kevin Smith at number nine, ladies and gentlemen. At number nine. Not even the... He beat out a rival. <laughs> yes, he did. You, I, I had a whole cool stock of other movies. I mean, we're gonna didn't even make the list. <laughs> hey, man. This is my list. I wasn't... I, I had to be satisfied, and I wasn't satisfied until I put Yoga Hoses there, so... I don't there you care. have it. I don't care. Alright, moving on. And number nine, this is a movie I debated whether to put on my list or not, but eventually it made it. One of the funniest movies this year is The Nice Guys. Funniest movie, one of the funniest movies, if not the funniest I've seen this year, and uh, Ryan Gosling... I laughed and, a lot on that one. Uh, I mean... Just the concept alone, it's it's one of the few one of three or four movies that come, came out this year that were set in 70s or 80s and uh, it was definitely one of the best movies of the year it maybe could have gone a little bit higher on the list but I don't know it, it was you got a very it's, active it's, performance it's, you have Russell Crowe, you have Ryan Gosling yeah and the girl uh, Angwin Rice um, was great as the girl they didn't make her too smart they didn't make her you know see they make her witty enough witty enough Usually kids are made to be like smarter than they actually are. She was just about right. So, yeah, yeah. It, number eight, the nice guys. And number seven, I couldn't, not I could not put this movie on my list. And uh, watching at your list, uh, we both have video game movies on our. Uh, yeah, but spot. this one, mine was so much better than yours. No man, Warcraft. I mean, I. I've been it. waiting for a Warcraft movie for so many years. Uh, I can't even begin to describe how how satisfied I was after watching the movie. Satisfied. And uh, this movie begins on a, such a high note. Music starts right from the beginning. One when you right when you see the intro and doesn't stop there. People complain it's difficult to follow, especially if you didn't play the game. No, it's not. And I call BS because it's really simple. You have two sides, and one side is in civil war. And they basically, you have orcs who are in civil war, right? And they come to humans world and they try to conquer it and battles happen, things happen and orcs end up living on this planet. Another thing they have in common is the ending. They set it up for the sequel. They set it up for the sequel, but for Warcraft it made more sense. But more sense for the Assassin's Creed, too. Me. I, I mean, I love Warcraft. I could argue right? I'm that, not gonna right? argue that. I'm I love not gonna the, argue. the actions there, the CGI effects, CGI the effects are the, amazing. One of the gripes that I had with Warcraft is Travis Fimmel brought on too much uh, Ragnar Lothbrok into his character, uh, which I didn't think fit Anduin Lothar's character. But you know what? It's he Travis Fimmel. It's Travis Fimmel. The was, movie works. I mean, the movie works deny. fine. The movie works fine, yeah. and it has to be on my top ten list. Is it better than some other movies that come, came out this year? No, but for me, our list I love people, it. our list, our list. Keep a yoga hoses, so it's not like you're complaining <laughs> too much. At number six, I have one of the most most obscure movies that came out this year. I didn't even watch it. That's how obscure. Uh, many people don't even know about it, but Elvis and Nixon is an Amazon-made movie, so it's a streaming service, and it's only one hour and 20 minutes long but it's fun, witty, exciting and uh, Kevin Spacey and Michael uh, you watched it, I didn't oh what's his name, the guy who played Zod in this Man of Steel uh, he's, he's really great as Elvis I believe he's Elvis, same as Kevin Spacey I believe he's Nixon and the interaction is made up but we all know this event actually happened took place because there's a picture which this movie is based on Elvis and Nixon together in a picture and apparently it's the most requested item in the Library of Congress and uh, which is which it says at the end of the movie it says it says it and they show you the real picture and uh, yeah I, I I had fun with this movie and it's right next to the nice guys in the terms of how witty and funny it is in my opinion but I don't know I just had to pour, put Warcraft in there so yeah blame me uh, hate me I don't care call me what you want it's my list you wanna keep going? 
Okay, and number five, uh, the Jungle Book. I know you didn't put it on yours. I put it on honorable but mentions I didn't just cause... because I wanted to put it in top ten. Just like, um, but just like, you didn't find the room. yeah, just like Hardcore Henry and Warcraft were. I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna say the pioneers, but they definitely set up standard for CG for motion capture, CGI, and uh, oh, yeah. co concepts that others will have to follow if they want to keep making video game movies. Jungle Book set the standard for CGI, unlike no other, because the kid in that movie is the only live action, live person, live anything in that movie. Everything else is computer generated, computer made, and still you believe you're in that jungle, uh, that he's fighting Shere Khan and... Uh, he grips you from the start when he's running. Because he's running getting back. Christopher to... Walken as... Uh, the characters are great. As I King mean, they... was great. The only problem I had maybe was uh, Baloo being voiced by Bill Murray, but... I didn't like that one particularly either, everything else fit. But while we were at the Jungle Book, I want to get Ildu Selba. Ildu Selba. Can we say this was the year of Ildu Selba? I know Rock made it to the people's top whatever list, uh, Sexiest Man Alive. <laughs> there goes the boulder. But uh, the Ildu Selba, he did the Zootopia. Uh, he did Jungle Book, Ashir Khan. Uh, he showed up in uh, Finding Dory. Bastille Day. He did Bastille Day, the, the take, which I put on my honor. But I wanted to put it in top 10. Basically, it's a 90s action movie with this Idris in it, in set in Paris. It's good. It's really, really good. And then he did Star Trek Beyond, being the main villain. He put up amazing performances this year. Definitely. Definitely. And Least of all... Is, and is, one of the reasons I love the Jungle Book this much is because it stuck to the original Disney animated movies. They even put the songs in it. And just seeing Christopher Walken sing King Louis' song <laughs> was amazing. Bare Necessities was great. Uh, Ish. It was it was great. It was. I I, like, I, I, know, I couldn't I, I couldn't get over Bill. I love Bill Murray. Like put Bill in the movie, I'm gonna watch it. But he did not fit as blue. Like true. everything else made sense. All I the agree. other casting choices, Ben Kingsley as Bagheera. Everything made sense. But Bill was there, and he just didn't feel right. Okay. He didn't, for me, he didn't fit. Well, and I love Bill, but he just didn't fit in the movie. Well, for you me... You know, Dan Aykroyd or you Dan, know, John Belushi. Jim Belushi. Jim Belushi, sorry. Put one of those guys, they probably would have done better. True. Uh, uh, I agree. Not, not that they would have necessarily done a better job, but they, they would, would have fit in better. Definitely. Bill kind of didn't fit. It was like, all this thing was happening, and Bill was soloing through the whole thing. Kind of. Which... To read them off this is a, a little video. bit. We'll put the link for the review in the description below if anyone wants to see it. I think I'm singing that, singing that review. Could be. Uh, number four, the movie we've been uh, waiting for for a long time, and uh, as of a couple of days ago, we had a different list. Of, both our lists were different, and then we went to the movies to catch up, if you would, on the couple of late arrivals here, and uh, the list changed. Like, they, the, the movies we watched. Collateral Beauty Brand, came Brand in pretty strong. I, I even, I, I said I cried on Eddie the Eagle. I didn't cry nearly as much as I did on Collateral Beauty. My, my eyes were watery the whole time. It's such a beautiful movie with such a great story, and the. It's not just that Will Smith is the main character, but it's just the he point of view you see. He's, he's part of the puzzle. Yes. He's not the face on the puzzle. He's part of the puzzle, and every, the movie. Because I here's that I got it. I got the Collateral Beauty as well, on number four as well. <laughs> so we can do the Collateral Beauty right now. But you had uh, Will Smith. He, he's he's not even the main character. I well, he is. He is because if if you didn't because play Will Smith, centers around him. Yeah, but uh, the but there's so the many pieces in this movie. From his friends, uh, played by Edward Norton, Marco Pena, and uh, what's her name? Uh, I forget. Sorry about that. Uh, they play his friends. So Will Smith loses his daughter to GBM, I think it's called. Rare form of cancer. She dies. And uh, three years later, he still can move on with his life. So what he does, part of his therapy, if you would, he writes letters. 
but not to the people. He writes letters to time, to death, and to love, as he feels betrayed by them. And so his friends kind of band together, which is a whole other story, and they bring in a couple of actors to play time, love, and death. But the way the whole thing fits, Kiera Knightley plays love. When she speaks, she cries. So you can imagine what happens when you're watching her cry. Uh, Helen Mirren, again, she plays that, and she does an amazing, amazing job. And a little kid called Jacob Lattimore, was he, he had the standout performance for me. He played time. And he, man, he, the little while the time was in the movie, I he didn't like, get a I lot just, of screen time. But unfortunately, he, I was hoping for time to have more he time. He nailed it. As far as performance goes, he did a heck of a job. The whole movie. And we didn't do a review on this movie just because we saw we it. We just so watched late. it yesterday. So, I mean, but as far as the mo movies goes, this is one of those that you would have rated higher, but just didn't fit right. But. Definitely a highlight of the year. Before, before I see it was kind of the last movie. So yeah, it's definitely an emotional ride and uh, bring t bring tissues. Bring tissues. Because it, yeah. but it's a heck of a movie and it works. The way the puzzle pieces fit together at the end is just Amazing. phenomenal. Yeah, great uh, movie. I cried a lot this year on movies, but this one kind of takes a bit. Yeah, number three, uh, Sing Street. Now this movie came out earlier in the year and. It's mostly unknown actors, it's an Irish movie, uh, set in Ireland in the 80s and this guy wants to start a band and yeah it's all about that but uh, it's so full of, it resonated with me because I know indie artists, I work with indie artists, I hang out with a bunch of them and this movie was, uh, I don't know, it was so true to life and the way it was set in the 80s, it just spoke to me because I, even though I didn't grow up in the 80s, I pretty much grew up in a similar world where we had nothing and we had big dreams, we still have big dreams and um, this kid went on and did something most people will never do and he did a, he put that first foot forward, uh, step of faith and uh, you know, went one step ahead towards achieving his dreams and whether or not that works out we never really find out but, but we, that's not the point of the movie and we, we it's, see it's the journey we see his struggles in the new school with the new people, with the bullies forming the band and he's just, the music's Falling great in love. and the music's great uh, which is usually which you have to give uh, John Carney he's the guy who made the movie for you who don't know, he did once another, if you didn't watch it, watch it, he did Begin Again with uh, Mark Ruffalo and Keira Knightley. One thing, one theme you have in his movies that's constant is the, so, is the music. Uh, he makes, for me, as far as the soundtracks go, he makes, but all his, I don't know what he did in the, before he got into movies. directing movies. But all his movies are based around music, and, and that gives them an ed another special feeling, if you would. Yeah, and Sing Street is definitely deserves its number three spot. Uh, if you haven't seen it or missed it, or weren't sure whether to see it or not, do it. Uh, do yourself a favor and just go see it. Um, and number no, we, we'll because we had this. It turns out we have saying number ones and two, so we're gonna okay. leave this for the end. But for me, at number five, we have The Passengers, another movie we call... I tried to keep it off the list, I couldn't. So, would you say that Passengers is your yoga hosers? Not really. Because, I mean, it's so much better than yoga hosers. Uh, you haven't seen yoga hosers. <laughs> True. But, uh, the trailer says, sells you in a story of a spacecraft that's traveling uh, to a colony. It's gonna take him 120 years to get there, but two people woke up nine years too early. And the way the trailer set, sets it up is two people woke up early, and there is a reason why they woke up early. Exactly. And we're not and, gonna give you and away that's, anything and about that. That's what you expect in a movie. But oh my gosh! Something else happens. And the story is so much better than they tell you it is. You agreed. do not. You come into the movie expecting one thing. And nothing that you expect happens. Some, the yeah. story, it's gripping. 
from I mean from the it start. Takes you yeah, in. it takes you it pulls you in, but when it pulls you in, it's not letting go. And you're you're right there in it. And let's not kid ourselves. I mean we know this is a concept we we've, we've already seen. Uh, Robert Zemeckis uh, did it uh, with Tom Hanks and uh, the castaway and this is basically castaway in space but there's people in this mood but you, you don't people. don't don't go into it oh it's gonna be castaway in space it's not it's nothing that you hear nothing that you see as uh, as long as you didn't see and spoiler saw, the reviews nothing that you see that you think you're gonna see is gonna prepare you for this movie exactly because it's gonna blow it's gonna pull you in grip you and it's not gonna let you go and whether you're debating to sit in 3d or not 3D is worth it. Uh, we usually, I usually don't recommend watching movies in 3D. I, I usually do watch movies in 3D. But uh, we you, we watch them in 3D. Don't get us wrong. But I usually prefer 2D. But this movie, you have to see it in 3D because it makes sense. It really it makes works for this movie. The 3D works. It really puts yeah. another dimension. In kind of movie. like Gravity did. Yeah, but, but so much better. Okay. I mean, Gravity. But passengers, I mean, I tried to even put it higher, but it just didn't fit. You can't put it any higher because than it, you, you know, because are. you have to knock some people down. But passengers, definitely. I mean, Chris Pratt and Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence, Lawrence definitely work they, as a couple. Like the mo the whole thing fits. The whole thing works. The the way the the plot grips you, the way that it progresses, and it's, you're there, and yeah. it works. The the movie works. You don't know, you didn't know what, you, you expect the one thing and it gives you another and gives you something thing. else. But it's worth it, definitely. Yeah. So debating watching and go watch it. And they put us on this ship called <coughs> Avalon. Yeah. And it's a really big ship, spaceship, spacecraft. And uh, it's a big, huge ship and it has all these cool stuff that you can do in it. And uh, they some of it is Easter eggs for Chris Pratt's previous movie. But, uh, <laughs> dance off. When he says dance off, I mean, right. come on. You know why it's there. <laughs> they probably put the whole dance sequence in the movie because of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, but. It works, the whole thing. Yeah, the, the, and way it's the, movie. the movie we saw with uh, Assassin's Creed and uh, Collateral Beauty on the same day was. Lawrence really... Fishburne comes towards the end. And yeah, gonna, and but the whole thing. Just... If you can, if we can see Lawrence Fishburne and Chris Pratt and J-Law in the same movie, maybe one day we'll see Marvel and Fox uh, Studios uh, come together and uh, give us that uh, Chris Evans and uh, Hugh Jackman, uh, Wolverine and Captain America World War II movie that we've been pining for. Uh, oh, since yeah. Chris Evans became Cap, so yeah. Oh yeah. What's your number four? Collateral Beauty, which we, which talked, we about, talked about. So what's Arrival, your three? Arrival takes the bait at number three. I well, okay, we, you know, I we reviewed it. We reviewed it. I loved it so much more than I he did. It, but uh, Dennis Villeneuve, that he does. Dennis Villeneuve does great movies, but one problem I mean, I he, did, he did Sicario, and after Sicario, he followed it up with Arrival. But uh, the whole movie, we did a review for it. You can watch it. I loved it. His movies I are slow-paced, and that's the only problem I have with his movies. Other than that, he's a great director, and uh, this guy is definitely climbing those steps up to Hollywood greatness. The thing is, opinion. I can't wait to see what he comes up with next because I think he's working be... on. Uh, yeah, he's doing or... Blade Runner. He's Blade, Blade Runner, Runner. Yeah. yeah. So he's doing Blade Runner. So he did Sicario. He did the Rival. Now he's moving on to. Blade you want to say your number two? Or Ro uh, you know, Rogue One comes in at number two. Rogue One. I had Which to. I had to switch my. I had to switch my one and two. You switch your one and two. I switch my one. So and two. your your one is my two and your two is my one. Yeah. All right. So uh, Rogue One. You want to do? So you let's just, talk Rogue right. One. We did a review in like half an hour. It's like longest review we ever did because the whole movie is oh my god, it's good. But one thing we failed to mention about Rogue One is how much it makes Star Wars universe better in all aspects. Oh yeah, it, definitely. It, it makes then, without a doubt. Uh, it, I tried. I tried to put your number one movie. I tried to put it at the, as the best movie of the year, but. The more I think the about Rogue, the more I think about Rogue One, the more I see, the more we watch. We saw it twice. We saw it twice. Yeah. We saw it twice. So far, so far, and I just 
Sorry, for me it worked. I know. The, I know. the number it's... one is there's a reason why it's number one. I mean, it was supposed to be your number one. You know, so I know, you know, but it's yeah. But Rogue One works. I mean, Rogue it's, One is great. It's, if you haven't if seen, the, if my number one movie didn't come out, Rogue One. Would if you haven't seen one. it yet, do yourself you a favor. Come on. You're living in. It's, we are living in a Star Wars world. If you don't watch these movies, you're definitely missing out on uh, not just on being part of the conversation about movies about Star Wars but you're missing out on a great story that's told in a great way and that will just the way the movie is done and the technology the effects uh, the acting it's all well done well made and do yourself a favor go see it and you're number one and uh, you're number two I, I would put Rogue One in this movie on as number one, then I would put them on the same. I would put. I would make them share the number one spot because I they're would, both but great. But you have to pick you, one. You lead it. You lead it away. All right. So coming in at number one is, is Hex Origin. Uh, Mel, Mel Gibson, Gibson directed it. Did uh, to say that he did a fantastic job is totally understatement. I Andrew agree. Garfield stars in it. As Desmond Doss. As Desmond Doss. Uh, who is a who medic? Is a, who is a conscious objector? Now, for Second World War, conscious objector is a guy who does who wanted to serve. That in the still war, exists. That still exists. But he did not want to carry weapons. And he did not want to kill people. That went against his beliefs. But still, he wanted to contribute to the war. So we follow Desmond as he goes from a scrawny kid who has to go scrawny. through scrawny kid who has to go through basic training, where nobody, not even his. Superiors. Superiors or even his people in his unit. Nobody wants him there. So he gets beat up every day just so he can be forced to quit. But he doesn't. He yeah, goes, they want to get rid of him. They want to, because they don't, they're they going to war and they don't want a kid there who doesn't want to carry a gun. Yeah. So you see the way people see him. The way the people, but he gets approved. He finished basic training. And he gets ships off. He gets shipped off to the Pacific. To Pacific, front. to Okinawa to Island, Okinawa. and there he manages. He gets a medal of honor for his uh, service. Because basically, you have the way Japs fought in. They you had to go through every yeah, island. Let's call them Japanese. We're not in World War Two, you know. I know we watch a lot of World War Two movies, so <laughs> he's a medal. Of honor Recipe. was he got it because under heavily enemy fire he rescued seventy Se something people. Yeah, uh, and forgive me, I do not know the number by heart. He rescued seventy something people and by basically getting them down the cliff all by himself. And yeah. yeah. And he sent a bunch of Japanese soldiers too. Yeah, didn't because eventually at survive. one point, at one point, he just went off. But the way then, the way Hexa uh, shows uh, the violence and the gore of war and reality of war, it just puts you right in there with Andrew Garfield because with Desmond Doss because he's a conscientious objector, and he, you're right there with him because you're not doing anything while you're watching the story being unfold, and. You're basically his character, and you can f you and you, you can watch the movie and get exactly because you're wondering every second that this guy spends on the front lines. And you're even before when, that, basically, even, we you wonder him. when he's gonna get killed, when he's when the bullet is gonna come in. You're kind of waiting for it because you know there's no way uh, he's gonna survive, but he does survive. And we saw a documentary with him a couple of years ago when, uh, he, when he was still alive. So six months before he passed away. Yeah. Uh, we we saw a documentary with him and we saw we we saw him telling this story this old 90 year old dude no he was younger than that but he I, but still uh, I thought he was 90 years old at the time because I missed it <laughs> he has to be really old but anyways he tells this story they go to Okinawa Island and he shows you the place where he went and it just I was wondering when they're gonna make a movie based on this guy's story. Because it was and a heck of a story. He, it was a story you rarely see told and not many people know 
and I think that if you haven't seen this movie because of everything Mel Gibson said in the media I think you're robbing yourself of a really great story and uh, Mel Gibson may be an asshole of a person but that doesn't mean he can't tell a good story in the form of a movie and you, if you don't want to support him uh, Fine, uh, that's your choice, but I think you're robbing yourself of a great story and great experience if you choose not to see his movies. Um, however, I don't understand your opinion. If but there's a reason why it's number one in the movies. Uh, definitely. It's based on a true story. It's set in World War II. All the stuff there are and like. the way But the way the story is told. You're never takes, bored. It's takes. like watching two movies in one movie because the first part of him growing up and getting uh, 2D basic training is one part of the story. The second part of the story is getting through. Which the is also important because it pulls you into it to the way that you identify with the character. They, they didn't throw dots and dots at you and say, hey, this kid's going to receive Medal of Honor, but yeah. they actually let you meet him. Yeah. Get to know him, what, what he's been through, what... what you know, and because and of when he gets to basic training, when he gets to war, all of a sudden you can identify with him. Yeah. All of a sudden you know who he is. He's not just another character on the screen, but you actually know, hey, hey that's the kid. And as I said before, you're basically living his story yourself through him because he doesn't carry any weapons. He could die at any second. But also what they do is... Uh, I lost my train of thought, but uh, what they do is uh, the second part of the story, the reality of war, and the way it's, they show you how real war is and why we should avoid it. But don't get this wrong. It's not a story about World War Two. It's not a story about Pacific uh, Front. It's not a story about Okinawa Island. It's story first and foremost about Desmond Das. Yeah, and it's set in the war because that's where people got to know him. But. You're following Desmond from start to finish, his fate, the way that he changed, the way people look at him. He was, by the time he got finished rescuing people, he was no longer the, the kid that everybody the beat up on. The kid that everybody beat uh, up, yeah. They actually, the following day they had to go back up the ridge after suffering massive casualties and they actually postponed it going up the hill because they wanted Desmond Das. To pray for him before and actually go. With and him. Uh, touching on the his religious uh, background is he's Seventh Day he, Adventist. Yeah, he's a Seventh Day. So he Day. doesn't fight. He, his Sabbath day is on the Sabbath. But you would also think that a movie like this, and because it's done by Mel Gibson, who we know is a Catholic, that maybe this movie would uh, be too preachy. But it's no, not. It's not preachy at all. It's not preachy at all. It it's just shows exactly the way. He it's the guy who stands up for what he believes when he's. When he's put into question, and he does the heck of a job. Yeah, and there's also a great love story and father and son story. Hugo Weaving does a great job of portraying a father, yeah. and his story is also sad and uh, uh, this has been going on for a while. And we've already <laughs> been going on for a while. We went on longer than we. So started. my number two is Rogue One, and number one in Hacksaw so Ridge. For you, uh, it's the other way around. And Doesn't really matter. Those are our top tens uh, of 2016. Of 2016, you can agree with them. You probably don't. We don't care. We're not. You know, it's our list, not yours. Do your own. Shoot a video and you know yeah. post it on. And then we're gonna go and write stuff that we're not supposed to on your YouTube channel. <laughs> not other way around. Yeah, and uh, there's still a few more movies that we have to see this year that came out in 2016. But in they're US. not gonna be made into the, when we made the 2017 list. They're not gonna be that. Yeah, so it's gonna. They're already on our honorable mentions, and uh, for a reason we because hope they are supposed to be that good. Yeah, and we hope you enjoyed our uh, top ten list. Let us know if what you did. You know, all Just the same. Give us your list if you weren't satisfied with us or think. Because this is, these are the movies that, ta uh, that resonated with us and we hope uh, that uh, we made you see a few of the, we at least encourage you to see a few of the movies that you missed this year and uh, didn't want to see, see. We hope that change you your mind change, stuff, yeah, yeah, we hope you change your mind and go see them for whatever reason and uh, we hope you get, had great uh, holidays and it's back to work for most people and uh, I'm gonna start 
Unless Finally, you're a cleric, you never went off work. Yeah, and I'm gonna be learning uh, Chinese and uh, soon in a few days but we'll be coming in with more videos uh, this soon. year and uh, we'll definitely try to keep it one video a week and so if you have a topic that you want us to discuss uh, let us know in the comments or tweet at us or message us on Instagram and uh, yeah follow us we still need 96 more subscribers so we can uh, customize our Bash Brothers uh, link on YouTube uh, but so make sure to share this and uh, talk about Tell it with your friends, friends. Yeah. and uh, we hope we'll see you next week. Bash Bros out!